Welcome to All Bodies on Bikes, the podcast, where all bodies are good bodies, all bikes are good bikes, and all rides should be celebrated. All Bodies on Bikes is a movement to create and foster a size-inclusive bike community. So join your hosts. I'm Maggie. And I'm Marley. As we explore the complexities of the biking world, help us break down barriers and create the world that we want to see. And don't forget that all bodies really means all bodies, not just larger bodies, but bodies of all sizes, ages, races, abilities, genders, sexualities, and beyond. Come along for the ride. Well, hello, Maggie. Oh, hey, Marley. I haven't seen you since we were in person in Washington, D.C. I know. That was crazy. Like the good kind of crazy. Yeah. I was looking at uh, photos the other day and like we were literally in front of the White House. Right. <laughs> it just feels so surreal to me. What on was bikes. Your f- on bikes. It's what crazy. was your favorite part of the trip? Ooh, that's difficult. Um, or maybe some highlights. Yeah. I think because I was... I was under the impression that biking in D.C. would be a lot more horrifying than it was. Um, so I think the my favorite part is I've been to D.C. before and I have some pretty cool memories from that. But that had all been like either on foot or in a car. And so the, just the whole new aspect of seeing it by bike was really fantastic. I, I did have just one close enough call to be like, I biked in D.C. and lived to talk about it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Um, But actually, while we're talking, I'd totally forgotten this. I think one of my favorite moments is we stopped to take pictures at the Washington Monument. Yes. And it had just started drizzling. We'd been riding around for a while. And this lady just walks up to us. I don't remember her name. But she's like, hey, do you guys want a poem? We were like, sure. Yes. And so she asked what we liked or something like that, I think. And I was like, I like bikes. And she just like freestyled a, a pretty great poem. At the base of the uh, Washington Monument and then uh, wished us happy days and headed off on her own direction while we went back to whatever we were doing. Yeah. And she was, was just was such like, a, I don't know, like a little a beacon of light that day. Yeah. I remember that. It yeah. was so funny. And it she was just so had cool. such great energy. And I think I gave her a couple bucks. Um, yeah. She wasn't necessarily asking for bucks, but um, I think that's probably her income is, you know, walking around giving t- uh, tourists poems. Yeah. Um, and she was just a delight. Oh, I forgot about that moment. Yeah. I think. Mine might have been, um, well, riding around obviously was amazing, um, but just the ability to pop in and out of the different museums was so cool. Yeah. And like, obviously there were some where you couldn't just pop in and out. We got reservations for the African American History Museum. And uh, that was actually, inter- I, th- I found it entertaining how you and I's different approach to the museum. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> which I knew was going to happen. And we had set up a plan before of like, hey, we might not do this at the same pace, um i'll see you later and it worked out great but yeah. that museum was really something special it was so amazing if you, have, if you have an opportunity to go there um it's a really important subject matter um i learned a lot that i was not aware of earlier um and just a really really cool museum um yeah. but i think my other favorite part was that the podcast worked yeah uh, <laughs> we did a live recording at we rei did. and what the crap <laughs> it went off without a hitch yeah, it was amazing. Um, so our listeners, hopefully, if things go according to plan, will have heard that episode last week. It was the, yeah. with the Metro. I'm going to say this wrong. Mwaba. Mwaba. <laughs> was it the Metro Alliance of Blind Athletes? Me- yes. Metro Washington Alliance yes, of Blind Athletes. Was, yes. Uh, but Tom and Shira were hilarious and great guests. And if you Fantastic. haven't gotten a chance to listen to that episode, make sure you go do it. Yes, for sure. It's such a good episode. Um, but today we're doing something a little different. <laughs> yeah, uh, we are. <laughs> are you ready for this? Maybe. Might as well be. Well, here we are. Wait, let me oh. give a more enthusiastic answer. Yeah, I am. Oh my God. I love you. There we go. <laughs> um, so a lot of folks have been messaging me and saying, who is Maggie? Where did you find this person? And I was like, well, why don't we do a Maggie interview? So that is what today's episode is. We're going to get into all things Maggie Lowe. Um, so let's just dive right in. Um, first question, tell us about yourself. Hello, my name is Maggie. <laughs> that's um, fair. Yeah, that's me. Um, I live in North Carolina. I have my whole life. I've lived in three different areas, but been in North Carolina the whole time. 
all actually I'm just gonna leave that up to your imagination <laughs> I, I act like a six-year-old so that throws people off and I like it um yeah I I work as a barista is my like main job I love coffee I love keeping people caffeinated um, but even more than that, I personally just really like the routine of it. Mm. Um, it's very, it's a very like spiritual experience making a cup of coffee if you're doing it correctly. Yeah. So, Do you have a favorite type of coffee to make? Um, when I am at home, I am doing a, a pour over pretty much all the time, usually in a Chemex, because when you pour it from the Chemex into the cup, it's that really like, it is that television sound of coffee pouring into a cup. And it just kind of like snaps me back to center when I hear that sound. Mm. So, yeah, that's my go-to. I used to work at a bike shop and we had a Chemex pour over. And it's a little bit of a learning curve to figure Mm -hmm. out how to fold, only how to fold the paper um, or (laughs) how to unfold the paper as it is. Um, But once you do that, it's actually a very simple way of making coffee. And it makes absolutely delicious coffee. It is the best. Yeah. Um, What else? Do you have any brothers or sisters? Are you an only child? Oh, geez. I am an only child, which I hope isn't too easy to assume about me because that's not usually a good sign. Uh, I I was raised in the middle of the woods. We lived a mile from the closest neighbor, and that was my grandparents. So I was I was very much very much an only child. I was as only as you can get. Uh, and yeah, it was just me, and we usually had dogs. So to this day, if I see you walking down the street, I'm going to greet your dog before I greet you. Um, it's nothing personal. It's just. <laughs> my experience in life um yeah well very cool yeah um I think that's I, mostly I have me. lots of questions for you um what so besides coffee and we know you're yes. into bikes and we're going to yep. talk about bikes of course we're going to talk about bikes but what other things do you enjoy in life pretty much anything outside uh i love to kayak i like to hike i have one of those Actually, I have two of the collapsible hammocks. One stays in my car at all times. One of them goes with me when I go places. And if I can find any two items that are close enough together to put a hammock between, I'm pretty much good for a day. I do like to listen to and play music. Mm. So play guitar, ukulele. I know exactly one song on the banjo because I am from North Carolina. And... Hmm. Hanging out with my friends and family. I feel like I have to say that because that's what people <laughs> always say when you ask them what they like to do with their time. And then I love a good nap. Mm, I also, are you a ha- Do you nap in your hammock? I can't sleep in my hammock. It is the weirdest phenomenon. I've tried to hammock camp so hard and I just cannot fall asleep in my hammock. Same. I don't know um, what it is, but. I, I always wake up really uncomfortable. Um, I think I also just feel really exposed when I'm in a hammock. Okay. Um, I just I, I feel like a tent, you know, even though it's that same layer of nylon, it just gives me a little bit more protection, I guess, yeah. in my own head. And I can I can get so peaceful. I personally think it think it's better than sleep in a hammock, but I just can't fall asleep. Makes sense. It's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get into bikes. Um, okay. So, um, you were on our steamboat gravel bike I was. team, um, and that is how you and I got introduced. But yes. Um. And I know this because I read your application and we picked you, um, <laughs> but your history with bikes didn't start out with steamboat gravel. No. Um, tell us how you got into bikes. Yeah, for sure. I I also love like talking to people on the podcast because so many people are like, you know, it went back to childhood and mine didn't really like I learned how to ride as a kid, but it was never there was always a bike somewhere on our property rusting in the rain, but not one that I consistently rode. And then in 2019, yeah, um, actually, it it kind of started in 2018. My very best friends in the world had a, uh, at the time, like, I guess she was one and a half years old. Her name was Grace. And she was diagnosed with a pretty aggressive form of brain cancer. Mm. And I ended up moving to get my first job in coffee, but also to be a little closer to them. And... In the process of that, moved to a much smaller town and had already kind of started thinking, like, I should be biking to work. I live a mile from where I work. And Grace did end up passing away in March of 2019. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, and I was pretty pretty much just really overwhelmed with the idea that there was nothing I could do. There was absolutely no way I could, I knew I couldn't make it better, but like there was nothing that I could do for 
my friends, Sarah and Jared, just to like communicate to them very clearly that somebody else is paying attention to what's going on. And freaking Instagram. <laughs> I'm scrolling on Instagram one day and I see this ad and it's like, when this new bike? I was like, why would I want a new bike? And I clicked on the thing and it's called the Great Cycle Challenge. It takes place one month every year. Excuse me. <clears throat> Usually it happens in where well, it started in June. Now it's in every September. And you just set the month aside and you bike as many miles as you can and raise as much money as you can for pediatric cancer research. And what a, what a cool cause. Yeah, it's such a cool thing. And I did, it was the first time in my history with bicycles, not the last, where I thought, hmm, all you need is a bike. I got this, <laughs> which has gotten me into some really cool situations repeatedly, not necessarily some of them have been harder than others, but you know, it was really fun. So I did. I had a Walmart bike that cost me probably $200 when we got it, probably less actually. I had ridden it six times in six years. <laughs> and in June of 2019, I put 200 miles on that bike. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and like the first day of June, I rode to the farmer's market. I loaded my bike down with groceries. I started back to my apartment and the chain just fell off in the middle of the street. So I took it to my local bike shop. And to be entirely fair, went in being like, I'm going in to, there's, there's quite a bit of money in the area that I currently live. And I'm like, I'm taking my Walmart bike into this bike shop. These guys are just going to like land blast me and try to get me to buy something that I cannot afford. And I walked in and I remember the guy that was working that day who I then went on to work at this bike shop. And he's now one of my favorite people on planet earth. He looks at the bike and he looks at me and he's like, dude, this is a cool bike. I was like, it is. <laughs> And he started working on it. And then he looks back at me again and he's like, I can tell that you're like a really serious rider. And I'm just standing there going, dude, I've ridden today and the <laughs> chain fell off on the street. But thank you very much, sir. Um, so, yeah, I rode the 200 miles in June. And since then, it has mostly been a blur. <laughs> uh, started working at that bike shop and had, had a good experience there, made some lifelong friends and. Yeah, ended up. I started there and immediately was like, I want to gravel bike. And everyone mm. was like, why gravel? And I said, because I don't think I'm ever going to want a mountain bike, but I would like to be able to get a little more lost in the woods. Famous last it, words. Yeah. Oh, for sure. My I got my mountain bike last November. It's amazing. <laughs> I love her. Um, but yeah, started riding just finding. I, again, I have never been somebody that's afraid to like go do things in the woods by myself. Uh, Good I usually go to have. Yeah. Um, so I would just find gravel to go ride. If you're not familiar with gravelmaps.com, I think is what it is. Uh, it's just all the gravel anywhere near you. So. Ooh, I want to check that out. It's funny. Um, here in Arkansas, and we're going to come back to your story in a minute because today's about you. Um, I was out for a ride yesterday and a road that was gravel last week is no longer gravel. Uh, so I think I might need to use that map. There's That's just a, a lot of. It is, but there's yeah. just a lot of new construction and this area has room to grow and the houses are still somewhat affordable. So I can't be too mad. Um, right. I mean, downtown Bentonville, the houses are not affordable, but out in the country, they're a little, a little cheaper. Yeah. Um. So back to the great cycle challenge. Yeah. Do you, have you kept track of how much money you've raised over the years? So I have, I the first year kind of has gotten lost to history, but I remember that was 2019. I also have posters hanging on my wall. Uh, of some of the years. Now I have to stop and do math. 2019, 2020. So 2021, I was working at the bike shop and we actually made um, water bottles. And it said the name of the bike shop on it. And then it had a picture of Grace on one side and it had a picture of me on the other side. Wow. And we sold those. And I think that year with bottles and just people donating because they felt like it, I think we raised close to like, I know it was over $9,000. Wow. Um, so yeah, yeah, that was, and again, that was that year alone. Last year we got, I think we got right at, oh, wait a minute. I've got this pulled up. Please hold. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so yeah, in 2021, it was right at 9000 uh, last year we raised almost five and in 2020 over 3000. So I could do that math if I felt like it. Oh, total raised overall right there in front of my face, uh, over $16,000. That is incredible, Maggie. Yeah. It's pretty fantastic. Um, and that's just, I have done a couple different things 
we've last year I I set up a, a really high goal that I did not meet for the okay. mileage. It, yeah, because what last year ended up being is I did a lot more sharing about like facts about pediatric cancer. Because one of the things we learned really quickly with Grace is of all the forms of cancer out there, pediatric cancer is the least underfunded research in mm. all of the medical field. Which seems weird until you realize that not a lot of old, rich people die of pediatric cancer. So the research is just going into cancer research that's going to help them extend their life instead of help children be able to fight cancer in the first oh place. Oh my gosh. Which is very outrage. Lots of outrage. Yeah. yeah, very much so. Um, so like one of the things I did last year is I... I just rode around town and stopped every mile on the mile. I had a handlebar bag full of sidewalk chalk. And I just wrote facts about pediatric cancer research on the sidewalk as I rode through town. And had a couple different instances. I had one lady pass me while I was writing a fact with her daughter. And she stops and she reads what I'm writing. And she just looks at me and she goes, what is this? And I explained like the whole situation. I'm writing to raise funds because pediatric cancer is the most, that research is the most underfunded of all of them. And I also try to keep business cards on me with the the website. And she was like, what, how do I, where do you, what, what is the thing? And I was like, here's a card. And she said, thanks very much. And I, she, I think she donated because somebody left a note. It was great running into you today or something like that last wow. year. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's been, it's been hard and fantastic in all the, in all the possible ways. What a special way to get into it and really, you know, connect back to what are their names? Jared and jared and sarah yeah jared and sarah and you know continue grace's legacy i think that's incredible yeah um have you ever thought about getting more involved with the great cycle challenge absolutely like you'd be an amazing spokesperson or like an influencer for them or i don't know i i did they started last year with i don't remember the name of it but it is like a a local spokesperson program uh and i have gotten involved with that this year which um supposed to be hearing more about that in the next couple months so yeah awesome definitely. um and i'm assuming um not to make this a sales pitch but people can probably <laughs> donate to you right now right because i imagine you're going to continue doing this um we will put the link to that in our show notes yeah um but is is it an easy to remember link yeah it's oh it's a great cycle challenge.com and then you can either there's a bar to search for a participant and you can just type in maggie low or it's the website slash Maggie Lowe and the number one, and that'll make me pop up. Easy. Well, yeah. I hope that, you know, your story resonates with some folks. Yeah. Um, thanks for sharing that. For so sure. how did you hear about Steamboat Gravel? What was that experience like? Uh, let's let's start with that story now. All the all bodies things. I did my first bike packing trip 2021, June of 2021. Yes. And I was going with a friend who was much faster than me, much more experienced on the bike. And that I started, we started planning and training for that right around the time the original All Bodies on Bikes video came out. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember who the first person was that was like, hey, have you watched this? You probably should. Um, but I watched it. And every time we would get together and plan the trip and any time I would have just this like, what am I doing? Why do I think that this is a thing that's going to get accomplished at any point in time this year? I would go watch the All Bodies video. Um, and so that's y'all helped me get through my first bike packing trip. So thanks for that. Cause it was Aww. super fantastic experience. <laughs> and then ironically enough, it all started as a joke for me going to steamboat. Um, I had had just full disclosure here on the, on the internet with folks, all of our friends conversation with my therapist and we get towards the end and she just looks at me and she goes, Maggie, do you realize that you work really hard to never say you're a cyclist? You're like, I ride bikes and I did I do this on bikes or I like to go do bikes. She's like, but you never, you never say I'm a cyclist. And I was like, yes, I'm very aware of that. It's very intentional. <laughs> what if somebody heard me? <laughs> mm. And she goes, okay, I have homework for you. I need you to write, I am a cyclist on your mirror. Can you do that? And I said, yes, I absolutely can. Knowing full well that I was not going to do it. I was already rationalizing why I would not do that. And once again, freaking Instagram, I got off the uh, meeting with her and I'm scrolling on Instagram and y'all had made the post about Steamboat Gravel. So I went and looked up Steamboat Gravel and I was like, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to compromise. Instead of writing, I am a cyclist on my mirror, I'm going to apply to this. And that is going to be my way of telling myself that I am serious about bikes. A month later, I get an email 
saying congratulations you have been chosen and i was like well crap that backfired immensely (laughs) oh my gosh but then it turned into everything that it was which i will eternally be grateful for um i i do very proudly now on frequent occasions say yeah i'm a cyclist Uh, my favorite because yeah i got back from steamboat and was visiting my friend who now owns a bike shop his name is lou and I had worn her all body's kit and I was hanging out and this lady came in and started talking to Lou and she looks over at me and she goes, I'm not, I'm not a serious cyclist like you. And I was like, do you ride bikes? She goes, yeah. And I was like, then you're a cyclist. And she looks at me and she's like, yeah, but aren't you a sponsored athlete? And I like went <laughs> and then my brain was like, girl, you are. Yeah. I was like, oh, <laughs> and I still, I looked back and I was like, sometimes <laughs> I still couldn't say it like with a straight face all the way through, but we're working on it. Uh, but yeah, got to go to freaking Colorado. Um, still f- doesn't feel like something that actually happened. And then I talked to all the amazing people that went with us. And I'm like, nope, this wasn't a dream. This was real. Uh, I often feel that way. Uh, yeah. The biking world has blessed me with so many opportunities that, yeah, it does not feel real a lot right? of the time. So very yeah. relatable. Yeah. Um. So I, you did the you did the green course at Steamboat, right? Yes, I did the 30... 30- However, I think it was 37, 38. I don't know. It was a lot of miles. with a three. Yeah. Um, How did you train for that? Did you train for it? I did. I trained very sporadically because consistency is the key, but I lost the key. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Sometime a long time ago. I keep looking for it and it just hasn't shown back up yet. But yeah, I did. I did train. We did a training program with Wahoo, which was, I think I did over half of that which is good for me that's more than i did um (laughs) exactly uh i had also started myself i found a a book that's got some like training stuff in it and i actually i think it's like eight eight weeks i want to say and i actually did that start to finish which i'm also exceptionally proud of because i just don't start to finish things it's not my strong suit um but mainly just log in the miles honestly yeah Uh, learning how to to handle things a little bit better i am someone who if i can avoid a hill i will do it (laughs) and didn't work as hard on that training to go ride at elevation in colorado so a lot more elevation on rides than i than i expected or than i usually do but and i killed it yeah it was great it was a great day on a bike yeah oh my gosh i i have learned if you're pushing your bicycle, you're still cycling because you have a cycle. <laughs> so I did do quite a bit of hiking a bike in Colorado, which mm-hmm. I'm, I just, it was again, still so surreal. I would walk for a little while and just turn around and watch people pass me because it was just entertaining. Yeah. Beautiful scenery, people working so, so hard. The way um, Steamboat Gravel wraps their courses really interestingly so if you're on the 37 mile course i was probably halfway through with my ride and i turn around and here comes the like leading pack for the longest distance that doesn't happen at races um so i just turn around like those guys are moving really really fast and then i started i recognized like three people and i'm like wait okay so you guys are in lead of the whole thing and we just met in the middle of my ride so that's kind of cool um so yeah, it was such it was just a good day. I ended up chatting with a few different people that were having some pretty hard moments because I was walking my bike. And that ended up being, I think, my favorite part of the ride was just people think you gotta you gotta push, 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 and be really uncomfortable by the time you're done. And I was tired. I was not uncomfortable when I was done. But if I had not been okay with pushing the bike, I would have missed those couple of interactions. For sure. Being able to just connect humanly and encourage other people on their ride and that was that was my highlight of the day I think oh, I love that I think a lot of folks are you know embarrassed to say that they walked their bike or they took a break but there's nothing to be ashamed of and yeah. you, like you said you're still doing it and um similar uh I made a lot of connections when I was walking the bike or yeah. you know intentionally pulling over to cheer for the fast people going past me right uh, <laughs> yeah well very cool yeah. are you going to steamboat again this year I believe so Yes, I'm going to be there. I'm actually probably not going to be riding, but I'm going to my focus this year is going to be yelling obnoxiously when other people pass certain points along the path. <laughs> Wonderful. And you'll be supporting our all bodies on bikes team, if exactly. I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, 
have a couple more questions for you. Okay. Um, one of the things that I learned last year when I was, when we were in, well, I knew this before, but it really became evident when we were in Steamboat is that you are an incredibly talented musician. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about um, where your inspiration comes from, where you play your music, where can folks hear your music? Let's just talk about that. Yeah. Um, that is the one thing that even more than I am a cyclist is something that I I haven't learned to say with a lot of pride yet. Uh, I am good at music. You are good at music. Here we go. I said it one time. That'll probably, it'll hold me over for six months. <laughs> I, again, play a guitar, mainly acoustic. Um, write. If I, mainly around here, people are asking for three hour sets, which I had not heard of until I moved down here. And it's ridiculous. That is a lot. Uh, but so in a three hour set, I do like, six cover songs uh so all the rest of it is original music um and inspiration is pretty much life music was therapy before i knew i should go to therapy sure so if anything big in any shape form or fashion happens i'm desperately scrounging for a guitar um recently started writing blues music Cool. Which which also still feels a little crazy because it's just so for so long it's just been like really chill, sweet acoustic stuff. <laughs> uh, and now it's my favorite thing to do because I'll I'll again with a three hour set I start quiet, the middle I get a little louder, and then for the the third hour I go blues and like try to lose my voice. And it's just interesting to watch people. I'll start the third set and like everybody in the room's like, wait, what? <laughs> Where did what? this person come from? What? <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, it keeps me sane for the most, for the most part. <laughs> we like a little bit of the, the not sane Maggie. Like the healthy crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like healthy crazy is yeah. still there. We all have it. Yeah. Um, what, what's a favorite cover song to play? Ooh, currently, actually my favorite overall, I think is Easy on Me by Adele. Okay. I uh, really like that one. And then I do like for the blues section, I usually do... Either my two go-tos are Tracy Chapman's Give Me One Reason to Stay Here or, oh, I just forgot her name, Black Horse in a Cherry Tree by K.T. Tunstall. Oh, oh I'm also, just imagining you seeing those. And those sound really good. Amazing. It's really um, good. Is your music on Spotify or YouTube or where can folks listen to it? I do have exactly one album on Spotify. Uh, it is called Tunes for Terrible Times. It's my pandemic album. <clears throat> And if you search my name, uh, two other songs show up that have some little square cat on it. Those are not mine. I don't know how they got on my account, and I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> but it also seems like the story of my life. Just ignore the cat. Um, so Spotify, the other thing is I usually try to, I fluctuate in and out of the habit of posting a song a week on Instagram. So those are those are the top two places. To and we will include stuff. links to both of those in the show yeah. notes definitely worth your time to take a listen um maggie has just an incredible voice and her album uh tunes for terrible times i listened to that on road trips and it is some real good hit you in the feels kind of music that's uh, yep yeah it's it's excellent uh but okay changing gears a little bit okay uh let's talk chain ring mcbearing <laughs> <laughs> I gotta bring that guy back. It's Monday. And he should make an appearance tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Chain ring McBearing. So I didn't know what this was. And then I opened up Instagram one day and there was Maggie with a mustache on, which mm -hmm. I must say you look great with a mustache. Thank you. And I think a bow tie. Um yeah. delivering kind of like it was like a farcical news update. Yep. Um bike related. Tell us more about that. <laughs> it's I don't remember why it happened in the first place i know i was working at the bike shop i think we had something we wanted to announce and they were like we need to do this in a funny way and i'd done a couple like i'd take a guitar in and sing a jingle um but they were like we need to get this across like how can we do it and i said don't worry about it i got it and i originally took a piece of a dog toy that my dog had obliterated and duct taped it to my top layup <laughs> And always wore, I went in with a necktie and my friend was like, that's not going to work. And he disappeared into the back and he comes back and he made me a necktie out of a, an inner tube. Oh my gosh. And like cut the end to a point. It was perfection. And so we did the first one and people lost their absolute minds. So we turned it into Tuesday Newsday. And every Tuesday we would give updates on what was going on in the bike shop. And then we started adding in some like bike related news with just random my favorite thing still that we did was i was sitting there reading off of my paper and i was like wait we have breaking news and somebody off screen just sh throws a 
paper ball at my face <laughs> and I grab it and open it and do the breaking news and like throw it back off screen. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was so stupid and fantastic and I haven't, hadn't messed with it since I left the bike shop. And sometime recently it was just like, I need to, he needs to make a comeback because people seem to really like it. Uh, it's something for me to do with my time <laughs> and also trying to, especially with starting a chapter of all bodies on bikes here in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. I was like, this will be a good way. The third news story will always be at least semi-local, uh, different rides, new bike shops, opening that kind of stuff. So I got a, actually my mother had bought me for Christmas, a nine pack of mustaches, <laughs> which is just my favorite sentence. It's I love saying that. That is amazing. And so, yeah, picked out a mustache and recorded the first episode. Uh, he has been on paternity leave for a couple of weeks or no, like about a month now. So he should, he should make a comeback maybe tomorrow. Is there a baby back. chain Ray McBearing somewhere? Um, apparently he said paternity <laughs> leave, but that guy, like he likes, he's got problems. So many problems. He's a drinker. Um, he's a pathological liar. We've already established that in my, in my career with him. And, um, so I don't know if there really is a baby or not. We'll, oh we'll my gosh. Have to, we'll have to see. Uh, we'll keep a lookout on Maggie's Instagram for Chainring sure. McBerry. <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, we are coming to the end, but I want to give you a chance to talk about your All Bodies on Bike Charlotte chapter and yeah. some of the plans and ideas you have for later in the year. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know why I feel this need to say for sure at the start of every sentence. I've picked up on that in my life recently. I like catchphrases. Mm. We're going to do away with that one. Anyway... If you live in the Charlotte area and you're listening to this, and I know at least some people do because I met you recently. Hey, if you're listening, <laughs> um, we are uh, the first big thing that's next happening is going to be Tuck Fest. And if you live within really uh, 300 mile radius of Charlotte, you should be at Tuck Fest. Uh, it's a three what is day Tuck Fest. Yeah, it's a three day festival. It's a high holy day religion for me personally. But for other people, it's a three day outdoor festival that's just celebrating the people that like to be outdoors. It's at the U.S. National Whitewater Center. It's concerts and bike races and foot races and flat water and whitewater and just amazing. Uh, and I will be there Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, April the 22nd. Is that a Saturday? I'm that pretty sounds sure. like it. Yeah. Okay. Um, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm actually going to be leading a like super simple bike maintenance clinic. Um, up at the White Water Center. Center. Yeah, thank you. It just left my brain, and so that's that's one thing we're gonna do. I'll also just be hanging out at Tuck Fest all weekend. So look for me, find me. Let's hang out and try to get into some bike riding that weekend, probably because why would you not? Um, looking forward to getting into some events as we get into the summer. One of the one of my first things is. I want to get plugged into some of the other stuff that's going on in Charlotte. A lot of cool bike stuff happening down here, but we will have at least a ride a month over the summertime, if not uh, some other options for us. So the best place to keep up with that is there is a Charlotte All Bodies on Bikes Instagram, and we'll just keep y'all all kinds of updated on what we're going to do and where we're going to ride and when we're going to go. Awesome. And yeah. um. Has be is becoming a running theme. We will have links to Tuck Fest and links to the Charlotte All Bodies on Bikes Instagram. Um, we also keep the general All Bodies on Bikes website as updated as we can with those events. Um, for sure. So keep an eye out for that. Okay. Yeah. And you already know what's coming because you typically co-host this with me. Oh, um, yes. But it is time for the last two questions. The um, so the questions. first one, what does your perfect day on a bike look like? Mm, my Mine would definitely be on gravel. And actually, as soon as I said that, there is a trail in Charleston, South Carolina, that starts out as a greenway and runs you all through town. And it's such a beautiful city. It's so old and historical and fantastic. But you get out there so far and it like casually switches over to gravel and you're in this like pine forest. And then you come through the pine forest and it is just like beautiful marshland as far as the eye can see. And you're mm. riding white gravel just right through the middle of it and at most you're going to see another cyclist or some bird watchers but usually you're just you're just out there by yourself uh, and probably got some music playing either on a speaker or 
some headphones and just very much aware of the fact that there are other people probably on the planet somewhere, but at the moment, all you have to worry about is pedaling. That does sound um, like a lovely day. Yeah. I um, like to ride with people, but that that's that's the perfect day. I, it's funny. I've never been much of a bird watcher. And then the pandemic hit and there were suddenly mm -hmm. all these birds in my front yard that hadn't been there before. Yeah. And now I like have binoculars and I've checked out books from the library. So I'm just thinking about all the birds you would see in that marshland. And it's oh, probably yeah. just absolutely amazing. It, it is. Um, and then the last question is, and you've talked about a couple other things, but maybe there's something else. But what do you wish that you got asked about more besides bicycles? Hmm. I do think today is interesting because the one that I would always talk about more is what we mean. We talked a lot about is grace and just educating people um, on pediatric cancer and how, how much space we have to just make it immensely better without mm -hmm. ever even getting close to curing anything. Um, but since we talked about that today, it, it, extendedly that's the word i wanted um the other thing that i would really enjoy talking about is <laughs> my favorite singer i have a favorite singer from the like uh like 30s 40s 50s uh who i just think is a fantastic amazing human person and has taught me a lot about myself because towards the end of her life, especially, she was very mentally unhealthy, but didn't have anybody at that time period to tell a woman, hey, we could fix this mm -hmm. uh, or make it better for you at least. And I always really like talking about her. What's her name? Yeah, her it? name is Peggy Lee. Okay. She is a phenomenal vocalist. Um, I think one of the big standouts for her, again, as a woman in the 50s, she sued the Disney Corporation and won. Dang. Um, so if you've ever watched Lady and the Tramp, you are familiar with her work. She co-wrote all the songs on that movie and is the vocalist for the Siamese Cat song. Okay. Um, but yeah, she's just phenomenal musician and again, pretty outstanding human. Like she stood up for some things that a woman... Oh, oh, woman in the 50s had no business standing up for and she was like but i'm here <laughs> heck yeah and so yeah i would talk about her incessantly wonderful um well is there anything else that you want to add before we wrap this up it mm. has been really fun to kind of put you on the other side of the microphone yeah it has been fun and weird and great <laughs> i don't yeah, people I think want to get to know you all the things so yeah well, cool. Um, well, thank you again for being my lovely co-host oh, yes. and for being an even better guest today. Um, <laughs> let, we should remind folks that they should like subscribe and rate and leave yes. us comments. Please subscribe um, and rate our podcast and, <laughs> and talk leave to us, us comments. so yeah. we don't have to talk to ourselves. Uh, <laughs> now you make it sound like it's like a bad thing that I'm interviewing you. No, oh, I no, no, to, no. We have backup episodes ready to go. I just really wanted to talk to you. I meant like me talking to myself, oh. which I was doing leaving a gas station at two o'clock in the morning the other day. And that's when I realized there was a man right outside the door. You know what? It's okay. So I've... just keep me from having to do that. Leave comments on the podcast. I can read those and talk back like you're there and listening to me. Yeah. The other thing you can do is we would love to do like a mailbag episode yeah. where folks write in questions to us. Um, so send us your questions podcast at allbodiesonbikes.com um they can be bike related they can be personal they can be music they can be whatever all the um, things so yeah send us your questions podcast at allbodiesonbikes.com um and that has been another episode of the all bodies on bikes podcast woo <laughs>this is an all bodies on bikes podcast powered by feisty media the show is produced by maggie and marley and edited by the team at feisty media thanks for listening